Picture this, you're walking through the woods after a light rain. The air smells fresh, the leaves glisten, and everything looks so alive. But somewhere in that gentle drizzle, invisible to your eyes, are droplets carrying something far more corrosive than water, acid. Not the movie kind that melts steel, but real chemical acid that eats away marble statues, kills fish, and slowly dissolves the bones of forests. So, what exactly is acid rain? It's still rain, of course, water falling from clouds, but it's mixed with a cocktail of chemicals that shouldn't be there. The villains? Sulfur dioxide, SO2, and nitrogen oxides, NOx. You can't see them, but you breathe them every day if you live near factories, power plants, or heavy traffic. When these gases rise into the atmosphere, they don't just vanish. They meet water vapor and oxygen, react, and transform into sulfuric acid and nitric acid. The next time it rains, nature becomes a delivery system for those acids, gently showering them down on everything below. Think of it like this. Every time we burn coal, oil, or gas, we're lighting little chemical fuses. Those invisible fumes float up into the clouds, and the sky quietly cooks them into acid. Then, when it rains, we get the bill. It's like nature's version of karma, except this one comes in droplets. Now, you might wonder, how acidic are we talking about here? Pure water has a pH of 7. Rainwater is naturally a little acidic, around 5.6, because carbon dioxide dissolves in it and forms weak carbonic acid. But in places with heavy industrial pollution, the pH can drop to 4, even 3. 0.5, roughly as acidic as black coffee or orange juice. That might not sound terrifying, but for ecosystems that evolve to live in near-neutral water, that small change is deadly. One of the first alarm bells rang back in the 1950s and 60s, when Scandinavian scientists started noticing that lakes in Norway and Sweden were mysteriously losing fish. Entire populations of trout and salmon disappeared. Trees nearby began to thin out and die, their roots literally burned by acidic soil. It took years to trace the cause back to emissions from factories hundreds of miles away. In the United Kingdom and continental Europe. Pollution, it turned out, travels. The clouds that carry your acid rain don't care about national borders or political speeches. And that's when scientists began to realize something crucial. The sky is global. What we burn in one place can fall as acid in another. A coal plant in Ohio could be responsible for acid rain in Canada. A ship engine off the coast of China could send sulfur halfway across the Pacific. In a way, acid rain was one of humanity's first global wake-up calls, proof that we share one atmosphere, whether we like it or not. You could almost say acid rain was the original climate crisis, smaller in scale but eerily familiar. It had the same ingredients, invisible gases, industrial greed, short-term gain, and long-term pain. It also forced the same realization. You can't fix the sky with politics alone. You have to change how you produce energy. What's fascinating is how sneaky acid rain's damage can be. It doesn't just kill trees, it weakens them. It strips away the protective wax on leaves, makes roots struggle to absorb nutrients, and leaves forests more vulnerable to disease and frost. In lakes, the effect is like dropping vinegar into an aquarium. Fish eggs fail to hatch, plankton die off, and the food chain collapses quietly one species at a time. Even the soil chemistry changes. Minerals like calcium and magnesium get leached out, replaced by toxic metals like aluminum. So the ground beneath your feet slowly becomes hostile to the very life it once nourished. And humans aren't immune, either. Acid rain doesn't burn your skin like movie acid, but it does corrode the things we build. Bridges rust faster. Buildings lose their shine. Centuries-old statues. Think of the Lincoln Memorial or Michelangelo's marble masterpieces literally melt grain by grain under constant exposure. Some scientists even call acid rain the invisible vandal because it's like pollution wearing a raincoat. But here's where the story takes a surprising turn. By the 1970s, people okay. finally started paying attention. And unlike many environmental problems, this one got better. Governments introduced emission limits, cleaner fuels, and technologies like scrubbers that trapped sulfur dioxide before it escaped into the air. The U.S. passed the Clean Air Act in 1970, and its amendments in 1990 became a landmark in environmental policy. Within a decade, acid rain levels dropped dramatically. Forests began to recover. Fish slowly returned to poisoned lakes. It was one of the few moments where science, policy, and public will actually lined up and worked. Still, the battle isn't over. New economies rising fast, like India and parts of Southeast Asia, are now reliving the same mistakes. As power plants and vehicles multiply, acid rain has made a comeback in regions that industrialized late. The same chemical story repeats, just under a different sky. And that brings us to the bigger question, one that goes beyond beyond chemistry. What does acid rain say about us? Because acid rain, at its core, isn't just about what falls from the sky. It's about what rises from below. It's about how the choices we make on the ground, in factories, in cars, and in policies, find their way back to us through the clouds. It's like nature's feedback loop, a reminder that every emission has an echo. And for once, the echo was loud enough that humanity listened. Scientists often describe acid rain as the gateway problem. The moment the modern world realized the environment is one giant system, not a set of separate boxes. Before the 1970s, 
place, most people thought of pollution as local, smoke in your city, trash in your river, but acid rain proved that air is the world's bloodstream. You can't dump waste into it and expect it to stay still. What goes up in one country literally rains down on another. It shattered the illusion that nature could absorb anything we threw at it. This realization changed science and politics. International agreements started to form, like the 1979 Geneva Convention on Long-Range Transboundary Air Pollution. It was the first time nations said out loud, your sky is my sky too. And that mindset became the foundation for everything that followed. The Montreal Protocol, the Kyoto Agreement, the Paris Climate Accords. In a strange way, acid rain prepared humanity for climate change before the term even existed. But it also revealed something deeper, the delicate chemistry of Earth itself. Our atmosphere isn't just empty space, it's a living, reactive shield that balances countless reactions every second. When we burn fuel, we alter that chemistry. The sulfur that once sat safely underground ends up in the clouds. The nitrogen from car engines turns the sky into a chemical lab. Acid rain is that invisible chemistry lesson written in water. If you zoom in, it's breathtakingly complex. Every raindrop forms around a tiny particle, dust, pollen, sea salt, and in polluted air, those particles come coated with sulfur and nitrogen oxides. Inside the droplet, reactions happen in milliseconds. Gases dissolve, ions form, pH shifts. When the drop finally falls, it carries a signature of the atmosphere it traveled through. In a way, every drop of acid rain is a piece of evidence, a chemical fingerprint of human activity. And here's the poetic irony. The same natural process that gives us life, the water cycle, also carries our mistakes. The sky that once washed the Earth clean now brings down what we've put into it. But that duality is what makes Earth so fascinating. The planet doesn't punish, it just balances. If we overload one side, it pushes back until equilibrium is restored. Even the recovery from acid rain tells a story of hope. Scientists once thought the damage was irreversible, but ecosystems proved surprisingly resilient. Given time and cleaner air, lakes can regain balance, soils can buffer acidity, and forests can sprout anew. Nature forgives slowly, but it does. That's what makes this story more than environmental doom. It's also about redemption. And yet, acid rain's lesson often gets overlooked today because it feels like old news. We talk about climate change, plastic pollution, carbon footprints, all bigger, louder problems. But the truth is, acid rain never really went away. It just became less visible. As industrial centers shift across continents, so does the rain. India, China, Indonesia. They're now facing what Europe and North America did decades ago. Factories there burn cheaper, high sulfur coal, regulations lag behind, skies darken with haze, acid rain still falls, only on different trees, different rivers. It's tempting to see that as someone else's problem. But if the acid rain story taught us anything, it's that there's no such thing. The atmosphere doesn't issue passports. The air over Beijing tomorrow might be the air over Los Angeles next week. And the emissions that feed the clouds don't care about politics. They only follow physics. So maybe acid rain is more than a scientific curiosity. Maybe it's a mirror. It reflects how quickly our actions ripple through systems we barely understand. A reminder that chemistry doesn't care about intentions, only actions. And if we ever forget that lesson, all we have to do is look up at the next rain cloud and remember, the sky remembers everything.